And good afternoon, back out with RB yet again. Doing a lot of these ride tests at the moment. Now we're back out on this one. And this is Craig's Iska. And this came in with something I have never seen before. This came in with a, uh, a leak to the right hand crankcase. And he uh, services his bike all the time, looks after it. This thing's done 3,327 miles in about six months. Uh, Craig does a lot of riding. And then obviously, he reported to us, I've got a little bit of a, a drip coming from the right-hand crankcase. And uh, said to him, get the bike to us ASAP. Obviously, if you start getting an oil leak too much, then get it recovered to us. Anything with an oil leak. Where are you going? All the gear and no idea again. Sit back from the car. Don't ever trust anybody that rides a Nissan. Drives a Nissan, should I say. And then obviously we found it got a leak from the seal on the crankcase. And I've never ever seen that before on Niska. But, as always, Lexmodo warranty. Job done. Ordered new crankcase seal. New seal's been put on and absolutely spot on it's been checked it's been road tested twice and then uh, he said obviously he said uh, i've had all my servicing done you can take it up and give it some beans uh, ah okay am i all right to ride it at 15 when you ride it at what you need so i'm giving it a quite a spirited ride today just to see if i can get it to leak again if not then the customer is coming to collect but it's been checked We've done uh, small ride tests at 40 and then 45. I'm going to take it up and give it a little bit more today. And just to show you how good these Iskas can go, I'm obviously not going to go full throttle on this, but I'm going to sit it at 50 for a change. Woo! Yes, 50 mile an hour. So my uh, second lot of ride test mileage, what I'd normally do on a second service, ride test at 50 to 55, and I've still got another, at least a quarter of a throttle there. So I'm going to wind it up 55 and just see where we go. And we're still sitting at 8,000 RPM. So 55, there we go on the clock, 54, 55, and I'm going to ease back. I'm one of these that doesn't like ride testing a customer's bike too hard. I'm a little bit finicky and fussy like that. If you've seen the Obviously the rides that I've done on the bigger CC bikes, I still sit at 40, 45 mile an hour. At the end of the day, it's a customer's bike, it's their pride and joy. And there's nothing worse than, uh, obviously, you're dropping your bike at a bike garage. And they're not doing ride tests with a video. How fast do you know how quick they're riding that bike? So, uh, we tend to sort of err on the side of caution when it comes to riding a customer's bike. Nice steady speed. But... I'm sitting at a nice steady 50 to 55 on this just because I want to give it a spirited ride and see if I can make it leak oil and I don't think it is going to because it's obviously had that new oil seal on the engine and I'm just looking down here making sure I've not got an oil light so get a check when we get back to the garage make sure the sump is all dry and it's been dry for the last two rides and if all is good give the customer a call and get him on his way now obviously, that is what Lexmodo warranty is there for. You do get teething issues on bikes, and even uh, with 3000k on the bike, you're still going to have the occasional niggle or the occasional problem. And everyone's like, yes, but ooh, I get this problem with my bike, I get this problem with my bike. Are you keeping it maintained, serviced? All new bikes will all have teething problems. It's common fact, if you remember the very, very first, I'm going to switch to cars now and tell you about a few cars. The very first Foxhalls, they were awful. When you first parked them on a hill, they were prone for handbrake failure. Yep, you'd put your handbrake on and the car would still roll down the hill. So you had that on the, uh, on the Vauxhalls. A lot of the Vauxhalls, the handbrake was absolutely crap. And then, of course, you had... Uh, if you remember the thing that's been going on with Volkswagen, all the issues with the emissions. Yes, we know all about the Volkswagens. 
I mean, obviously if you're switching to bikes, a lot of the early bikes were prone for problems. And I can tell you one, I know, because mine is an ongoing thing. Kawasaki Ninjas are terrible, absolutely terrible, unless they're running with the fuel systems. And they have a manual pump on those. But it does take absolutely ages for that bike to prime its carbs up. And we've got a, a ZX750R in as well, or ZX7R. Now obviously, when we went to start it, the technician was like, bike's not starting. I went, no, there's a certain thing you've got to do. Bit of choke, and just fire it up on tick over. It will fire on one cylinder, then two, then three, then four, then it will run absolutely fine, because it takes time for that Kawasaki to prime its carbs up. My Ninja does exactly the same, and it is the same all across the Ninja. If you buy a Ninja, they are terrible at priming their carbs up. But once they're running, once they've had some fuel through them, They'll sit there for about a week, all good. If you leave it more than sort of five or six days, they dump their float chambers. And it's a common thing with the ninjas. So, that's one for you. Same as the Aprilias. If you happen to own an Aprilia, and the person to speak to about that is Jim Diesel. He knows all about it because we've got an Aprilia RSV million. And I said to Jim, I said, it's been an absolute cow to start, but when it does, the starter motor kicks back, and then it doesn't like it, it'll fire, but then it doesn't fire. And he went, yep, yeah, first thing to do is check the sprag clutch. Aprilia's are known for throwing their sprag clutches. And lo and behold, we took the side panel off. What was it? The sprag clutch. So thank you very much, Jim. Yes, you were absolutely spot on on that one. So all bikes will have teething issues. Now obviously, this one is riding absolutely perfectly. Job done. It's had a spirited ride. Good God, I'm out accelerating cars. This is good fun. And I did say to Craig that I would give it quite a spirited ride on this one. Just to check her out, make sure she's running absolutely perfectly. Now I'm using just the, uh, the CBS on this at the moment, on the rear brake, but braking performance on these little iskers is absolutely lovely obviously if it's a dry day stay on the front brake I tend to trail brake quite a lot so coming in on the front brake and then just easing off coming out the corner very bad habit that I picked up off of track for trail braking which I shouldn't be doing but obviously as an experienced rider there's a very very fine line between trail braking correctly and giving it too much brake coming in and coming out the corner and trail braking very very simple thing to do is this keep an eye on that front brake here we go and just steering it in and ease off and that is how you trail brake get the power on as you're easing off of that uh, front brake but it's not something that I would suggest you try as a 125 rider unless you've had some experience best thing find a car park Go into a car park, practice doing your turns, just using that front brake and get a bit of trail braking on the front end. And obviously you don't need it pulling out of junctions, but if you're coming into a corner too hard, trail braking is a very, very good option. Using the front brake, not the rear, to get you around the corner. If you go using the uh, rear brake going into a corner, you're going to get the back end stepping out. So, ride test all done. And obviously Craig's going to probably watch this video. So Craig, bike is all good, no oil light on, and I'm going to check the sump when I get back if it's all good, goes out to him. So, just big big thank you to the uh, guys at Lexmodo for staying on the warranty, the boys know who they are, I'm not going to name them, but my uh, three guys that I've got in warranty, and I tend to speak to warranty all the time at Lexmodo. Not just for warranty parts, but to obviously up update me on uh, what's coming out. And as I say, if you've seen the post that's gone up on the Facebook, and uh, it's all over Instagram, lexmoto.co.uk, go and look at the Lexmoto page, there is a new bike coming. I know what the bike is, they've already announced what it is, I'm not going to say anything more about it, apart from watch this space. I have seen the photos, and 
you are going to be over the moon with it absolutely i was blown away when i saw those bikes this morning and that is all i'm going to say about the new lexmodo bike i am not saying anything more but watch out for the reveal 22nd of this month so from rev bomb signing out happy boys it's a big goodbye from me